Hello, I'm Nick McNulty and this is uh, an introduction to a series of videos I'm going to make um, related to uh, my website which is www.nickmcnulty.co.uk It's a website which is all about um, me as a guitar tutor and I'll be showing various things that you can do with the guitar um, that you might not find in other places, good little bits of advice and things and also um, introduce you to this Play Today with Pick the Pleck which is a book I have written on how to play guitar um, with chords, finger picking, strumming and various uh, things that you can do um, to start you off. I'm going to introduce you to various things like how to play chords, um, the tools of the trade like capos and tuners, anything that's going to make your life easier uh, when you're starting out playing guitar. So have a look out for um, nickmcnulty.co.uk with a www in front of it of course and I'll see you on the next video. Hello, Nick McNulty here. Um, I'm going to do a a quick video on how to tune the guitar. Uh, this will become very very useful uh, if you can get this done and organized before you start a Skype lesson because if you're doing the lesson uh, via Skype um, it's best to be able to concentrate on how to play the guitar rather than how to tune it. So if this could be considered a bit of um, pre uh, pre lesson work to do please to be prepared for a Skype lesson that would be really great. Now, the, um, going back to absolute basics, the guitar has six strings. The highest is number one. The lowest is number six. So from high, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, when you tune the guitar, it's usually best to start from number six. Number six is E. Number five is A, number four is D, number three is G, number two is B, and number one is E. So a good way to remember that, E, A, D, G, B, E, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, E, A, D, G, B, E, or Eddie 8 Dynamite, Goodbye, Eddie, which I'm afraid always makes me laugh a little bit. But yeah, Eddie 8 Dynamite, Goodbye, Eddie. Um, if any of you have one of these, um, a, uh, an electronic tuner, these are really, really good um, because they give a very precise tuning for each string. Um, as long as you're in the, the, the vicinity of where the string should be and you have an idea of, of where it is, it's really, really helpful to get bang on tuning. But if not, try and use the notes from this video, at least as a guideline, um, so that you've got um, something in place, because the worst thing is to be out of tune when you're having a lesson. Um, it won't sound as it's meant to sound. So um, a good way to tune the guitar, provided that number six is correct, which in this case it is, go to the fifth fret on the um, on the sixth string and it will sound like that and that's what the A string should sound like okay six five so once they're correct drop that finger down to the fifth fret of the fifth string and that is a D and that's what the fourth string should sound like so once that's correctly tuned, drop the finger down to the 5th fret of the 4th string and that's what the 3rd string should sound like. Now the one anomaly coming up is on the next one you have to go to the 4th fret of the 3rd string for the tuning for the 2nd string then you're back to the 5th fret 
on the second string for the tuning of the first string. Oh, now there you go. The, that's correct on the second string, but the first string is slightly flat. So that's how you can tell that your guitar is in correct tuning. So once the E string is correct, at least to the tuning on this video, hopefully, fifth fret on the sixth is what the fifth string should sound like. Fifth fret on the fifth is what the fourth string should sound like. Fifth fret on the fourth string is what the third string should sound like. Fourth fret on the third string is what the second string should sound like. And then fifth fret on the second string is what the first string should sound like. Try and get used to this sound. That's what a guitar should always sound like when it's um, all the open strings are played with one strum. It will always sound weird if one string is out of tune and you have to try and ascertain which one it is. That one's okay, you just have to assume that one's fine. Yep, that sounds great. So it's the, the um, I've got the, my finger on the fifth fret of the fifth string, and that's correct. But the fourth string isn't. It's flat. So you have to bring it up to pitch. That's how to tune the guitar. So please try and have that done before any Skype lesson to save time. I hope you find that of help. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help um, as far as tuning a guitar is concerned. But remember, strings six, five, four, three, two, and one. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Are E, A, D, G, B, E. Eddie 8 Dynamite, goodbye Eddie. Hello, Nick McNulty here. This is a prelude to a series of films that I'm going to be calling the How To series of films. How to do certain things like make um, minor seventh chords, major seventh, etc. But you have to know what this um, jargon means, and this is hopefully going to explain that um, as I'm going along. The scale has eight notes in it. Seven notes are different, and the top eighth note is a an octave higher than the first root note. Here are seven notes. And then the top root note, same as the octave below. These are very important in how they are all used with each other. A chord is made up of the first, the third, and the fifth notes of a scale. But you can add notes like the fourth note, two, three, four, and the fifth is already there. The sixth note can be added, the seventh, and therefore you get your chord when you have the eighth note. Um, the How these relate also works in chords themselves. So if you have a G chord, you have G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. G, A minor, B minor, C, D, E minor, F sharp diminished, resolving to a G. G, A minor, B minor, C, D, E minor, F 
sharp diminished G. Knowing how those notes work with each other is very important and being able to identify them. So if you see a chord um, with a letter on its own, C. By definition that's a C major. Anything done to a C major will have a letter or a number after it. C major 7 you add the seventh note of the scale to make it a C chord into a C major 7. If it's a minor chord you're taking the third note of the scale and reducing it by half a tone. So here's an A major, the third note of the scale you reduce it by half a tone to make it a minor. An A minor seventh you add the seventh note of the scale to increase the, um, the scope of the chord even further. A very clever one which has been used by Ed Sheeran just recently and I've got to think about this. It's an E minor seventh suspended four and he uses that in Castle on the Hill. resolving chord is an A suspended 4 7 or A7 suspended 4 whichever way around you do it. So by being able to identify the numbers that you find after the chords drastically changes the sound of the chord and you need to be able to identify them by hearing them. So try and think about adding the, um, the different numbers of the scale to a particular chord to enhance it in some way and get to see how it hears. And you'll see that on the how-to range of films which will follow this particular one. Um, if you need any more information on that, have a look at how to play with Pick the Pleck, play today with Pick the Pleck, and you'll find this on www.nickmcnulty.co.uk. And I'll see you on the series of how-to films. Hello, I'm Nick McNulty with another video um, which I hope will help with um, starting out on guitar. I'm going to introduce you today to a couple of um, interesting devices that I actually can't do without. Uh, you can get guitar tuners um, as apps on a phone, very similar to this one. You can use those uh, to help tune. But invaluable are these types. There are a number, a number of them on the market but if you get a clip-on type of tuner that sits on the end of your guitar, you turn it on and it gives a very speedy and very accurate um, reading as to that your, um, that your strings are in tune here. If I take one completely out, oh that sounds dreadful. So there's the offending string, which is a G string. So if you tune it up to the correct pitch, like that, a tuner will do that. And the beauty of this, particularly on stage, which is why I find it so invaluable, um, is you can tune without having to hear it. It's a visual. So on stage, with all that noise going on, um, or in a classroom or anywhere about, you can tune without having to hear. And all you get is when it's in perfect tune. Another brilliant device is a capo. Um, it changes the pitch uh, of the strings so that when you've learnt the first seven most important chords you'll ever need to learn, you can then change to um, a different pitch and therefore use those same chords in a different way to sound entirely different. Here's a C and a D and a G. Put a capo on, those same shapes, C, shape, D and a G, shape. That's actually now an E 
and a B and an F sharp. Yet they're the same shapes. So it's a great way to um, uh, it's a great way to enhance your playing very very quickly. Just playing further up here. That's a D. That's an A. And that's a G. Yet using the same shapes as a C, a D shape, and a G shape. Two very very useful tools that if possible you should never leave home without. Have a look at nickmcnulty.co.uk with a www in front of it and more advice will be found on there.